Welcome. My name is Christian Bonford, Senior Project Sales Manager at Eagle Brookman in Germany. I'm very happy to be your host for this video presentation on compressor sealing technology. The next half an hour, we will discuss how to enhance operating reliability of centrifugal compressors while looking on solutions related to operation of dry gas seals. So, let's have a look on the content. A short introduction will show the challenges while operating a dry gas seal. How reliable is actually the dry gas seal as a component of centrifugal compressors? We will look on causes of dry gas seal failures and the related observations respectively findings. And finally, show solutions of sealing technology to improve operational reliability looking on how to avoid issues from process side by supply of seal gas as well as how to avoid bearing or contamination from the bearing brackets. So, when we talk about dry gas seals, can we say that they are reliable compressor components? Looking on reliability data in the field, only 3.9% of compressor failures are related to dry gas seals. And compared to all the wet seals, mean time between maintenance has been more than doubled. Having that said, we can definitely say that dry gas seals are reliable industrial components. However, in case of failures, the costs considering production losses for the end users due to process stop and repair costs for seals are significant and can easily exceed $1 million per day. Going deeper and looking on those 3.9% of centrifugal compressor failures caused by dry gas seals, those can be categorized in loop oil contamination, installation geometry, process gas contamination, as well as seal gas supply contamination. The number shows that the majority of the failures are caused by contamination of dry gas seals. So, the challenge is to keep the dry gas seals clean during all operating conditions. This is not always easy and cannot be always reliably ensured. Contamination from process site by unfiltered process gas, quality of seal gas or not reliable seal gas supply, and even contamination from the bring brackets by bearing oil, are negative influence factors for keeping a reliable operation. So, what kind of contaminations have been experienced while dry gas seal operation? Basically, we can differ in particles. In most of the cases, we talk about dirt and iron oxide. In some special operation environments, Carbon dust and elemental sulfur is also possible. Then we talk about liquids. We have to consider condensates, depends on the source, oily or sticky, glycol, water, and oil, for example, bearing oil. A detailed look on contamination by particles. Particles smaller than the installed filter mesh, like iron oxides or even carbon dust, can pass the filter unit and contaminate the dry gas seal. Those particles can accumulate in the area of the dynamic sealing element, and as a result, the axial movement capability of the dynamic sealing element will be affected, causing the so called seal hang up. It can lead to contact between seal faces and subsequent wear, but also in worst cases, in total seal failure. Other risks are related to clocking of the gas grooves on the rotating seal face, with similar cause as just described. Different kinds of contaminations of dry gas seals by 
particles can occur when particles will be dropped out by the system. For example, carbon dropped out in CO2 application. Picture of this you can see here. Or elemental sulfur in compressor operations with H2S content in the gas composition. As we can see here, this yellow deposits on the stationary ring. The effects on the seal performance are similar to those explained in the previous page, like hang-ups or reduction of the dynamic lift-off effect and even seal wear. Besides of contamination by particles, contamination by liquids, for example oil, condensates or even glycol used in dehydration process needs to be also mentioned. Liquids can, in worst case, lead to immediate failure of the dry gas seal, especially when compressor will be restarted after shutdown with liquid contaminated seal faces. Liquid in between the seal faces is like glue once the seal faces are in contact. The seal faces are in contact during standstill operation. Once the compressor shaft starts to rotate, the stationary seal face will be damaged. It will be cracked due to the extreme high torque caused by the liquid film in between the seal faces. There are multiple possibilities how liquids can reach the dry gas seals. This page shows one overburdened filter unit. Once the filter units are overburdened, we can see here by entering and flooding the filter cartridge with fluid, liquids will pass the filter and reach the dry gas seal. Another common liquid contamination is dropout of condensates. This is quite common once the dew line of the seal gas, here shown as gray line in this PT diagram, is crossed during operation of the seal. That can have multiple reasons. For example, insufficient temperature assumptions, temperature measurements not representative, insufficient piping isolation, and also transient conditions. What happens? Seal guards need to be pressure and flow regulated. While regulation by means of pressure control valves of flow orifices in the supply line, the gas is exposed to, exposed to pressure drop. With decrease of pressure, the gas cools down due to the Thomson effect and condensates will drop out in case the supply temperature is too close to the dew line. We see this looking at this red curve showing the decompression curve in the seal. As a result, high amount of liquids will contaminate the dry gas seals. The outcome respecting the findings of this kind of contamination is shown on this page. Here, process site of dry gas seal is contaminated with oil or glycol or even condensation. The picture shows this typical brown sticky deposit which leads to seal failure. Similar findings, but on the atmospheric side of the dry gas seal, are indicators for contamination caused by bearing oil passing the separation seals. Well, what solutions for improvement are available in the industry? Looking at the sources of contamination, solutions need to be considered to prevent seal contaminations from process side by unfiltered process gas, as well as from bearing side by lube oil, respectively bearing oil. However, seal gas line is also a source of contamination, and special remark needs to also be considered here. So, let's first look on the primary seal gas supply. What can be done here in order to improve the operational reliability of dry gas seals? We see we have two options. Here we will have a look in detail. 
Keeping in mind that contamination issues can occur by supply of unconditioned primary steel gas, there are mainly two options how to cope with it. First, treat the gas. Second, in case steel gas treatment respectively conditioning is limited, update the dry gas seal design to cope with unconditioned seal gas is of interest to look at. Seal gas treatment. We are talking about operation of dry gas seals. As its name says, dry gas seals requires for safe and reliable operation, clean and dry seal gas during all operating conditions. But what does that mean, clean and dry? In terms of clean, we need to talk about size of particles. Size of particles in the seal gas. According to the API 692, the maximum size of particles that are allowed to be in seal gas is limited to one micron absolute. In terms of dry, we need to talk about the humidity of the seal gas. The API 692 indicates the seal gas entry temperature at seal inlet port needs to be at least 20 Kelvin above seal gas dew point. This ensures that no condensation can occur during the operation of the dry gas seals. So, how to do and how to reach those requirements? The API 692 gives a quite clear picture that needs to be considered while designing the seal gas system. The API 692 defines, consider a seal gas treatment kit. Seal gas treatment kits are also known as seal gas conditioning kits with the following modules. Here, the seal gas flow is from left to right. The first module the API 692 refers to is the seal gas supply module. Here, seal gas should be taken from a higher state of the compressor unit or an external source and routed to the next stage. Use a cooler to decrease the seal gas temperature and force dropout of condensation. Dropout of heavy hydrocarbons is here the aim. Extract those dropouts and fluids, but also heavy particle contamination by a separator with integrated cyclone and the mister. A fine filtration by using a Kalesha filter unit should then reach the requirement of the API 692 of 1 micron absolute. Heat up the gas to 20 Kelvin above the dew point to avoid any further dropout of contaminations, respectively liquids. And last but not least, use clean gas booster in case clean gas flow towards the process side library is not sufficient for safe operation. Suppliers of the supply management system need to consider all options unless the supplier can technically argue against the here mentioned individual modules. However, in some cases, when for example the gas composition change compared to the one projected, adaptation of the conditioner's kit might be challenging. In this or similar cases, a dry gas seal that can cope with contaminated seal gas supply can be of interest. So, looking on this, adequate design features to increase the operational reliability of dry gas seal to make the seal more robust could be an interesting approach. However, this option requires individual product examination of critical operating conditions and would need to support worst case scenarios. Having that said, close communication and cooperation between dry gas seal manufacturer and customer is essential in order to identify those scenarios. 
but it's a great approach to increase this operation availability of the compressor units even after seal management system design freeze. What can be done? Which features dry gas here should have implemented? First, it needs to be prevented that the process site dry gas seal is exposed to high flow of unfiltered gas. Using a smart labyrinth design on process site, the flow volume to core parts of the dry gas seal, the seal rings and the dynamic sealing element can be reduced to a minimum. Doing so, less contamination can reach the operating critical dry gas seal components. Second, increase temperature level of dry gas seal during dynamic operation by atomization of seal leakage. Less consumption rate leads to less cooling of dry gas seal, respectively less risk of Joule-Thomson effect, and finally reduce formation of condensates. Special groove design with self-cleaning effect during operation increase the operation stability by keeping the lift of behavior of the seal at its optimum. Supporting wet startup, startup with fluid contaminated seal faces, is essential to avoid seal damage at startup. This needs to be done by enhanced torque transmission devices. For sure, extreme hard self seal face materials like diamond face will help to deal with particles as well as special designed dynamic sealing element that helps avoiding seal hangups. So there's a lot of options how to enhance seal robustness. The main advantage here is that it helps to reduce supply system adaptations, which in some cases are associated with huge effort and capex on customer side. Next topic we are going to discuss on the next pages is how to avoid contamination by untreated process gas. Remember this page discussed a couple of minutes ago? Dry gas seals needs clean and dry seal during all operating conditions. Dynamic operation, but also static operation. To understand contamination by process gas, we need to understand clean seal gas supply. Following animation shall visualize this. Condition seal gas with higher pressure than the pressure to be sealed is supplied via the primary seal gas supply line. The supplied seal gas volume, here in dark gray color, is divided to one flow passing the seal faces and generating the seal leakage, and the flow towards the process at labyrinth into the process, light green color. Having this ensured, condition seal gas creates an ideal seal operating environment, and seal core parts will perfectly operate. During pressurized stand still, the situation is different. Since no differential pressure is available in the compressor casing to ensure clean seal gas flow to the seals, same pressure at suction and discharge nozzle of the compressor casing, static consumption of dry gas seal will lead that unfiltered, dirty process gas will pass underneath the process side labyrinth and will contaminate the primary seal. The process gas will flow backwards. What does it mean with regards to the seal operation? Process side seal will be completely contaminated, including the area of axial movement of the dynamic sealing element. Due to delta P across process side seal faces, settle out pressure on outer diameter and flare pressure on inner diameter of the seal faces, dirty product gas flow will contaminate the sliding faces as well, entering in between the seal faces. The result is seal failure, and this reflects the biggest category of failures of dry gas seals. How to prevent? Well, create positive clean gas flow to the seal. In dynamic conditions, flow is generated by normal differential across the compressor, from suction to discharge, respectively from discharge to suction. At pressurized static conditions or during startup, Positive flow needs to be created. The API 692 defines two possibilities. Alternate seal gas supply, an external source that is routed through the seal management system, or use of seal gas booster. The seal gas booster is circulating the process gas while routing it through the seal management system. The external seal gas supply, 
is self-explanatory. However, it has to have a higher pressure than the pressure to be sealed in the compressor casing. Well, let's have a look at the seal gas booster. Seal gas boosters are categorized by the operating principle. Positive displacement devices like piston boosters and rotating units like electrical driven rotary type boosters. The requirement to those boosters is quite clear. Ensure reliable clean gas flow to the dry gas years. Based on the different working principles, the operational reliability and functionality differs significantly. Let's look on the differences between those technologies. One significant difference is the simplicity of operation. While rotary type clean gas boosters are easy to operate by its simple design, rotating electrical driven unit, the reciprocating boosters needs an expensive air supply and pulsation dampers. Another main topic is the reliability of operation. Service intervals after 24,000 hours of continuous or discontinuous operation on rotary type electrical boosters compared to limitation operation hours due to wear of internals on reciprocating units shows the advantages electrical driven rotary type boosters have. Also to be remarked, the rotary type boosters are hermetically sealed, hence environmentally safe. Overall, electric driven rotary type clean gas boosters have been proven now for many years and reflect today the industry standard. Well, the last topic of this session is covering the subject related to contamination of dry gas seal by bearing oil. Oil contamination is one of the worst enemy of dry gas seal. It leads to significant reduction of reliability on the process side, but also on atmospheric side, respectively bearing side. Dry gas seals are exposed to bearing oil on atmospheric side since the dry gas seal cavity is located in between the compressor impeller, typically here on the process side, and bearing brackets on the atmospheric side, looking at this drawing. Obviously, bearing oil needs to be kept away from the dry gas seal chamber at all operating conditions. Hence, it is essential that separation seal technology needs to fulfill this requirement reliably. There are several possibilities how to design separation seals. Separation seals are categorized in two types of sealing technologies. Radial sealing technology and coaxial sealing technology. While separation seal designs with radial sealing technology use nitrogen to create a barrier flow by a radial gap between shaft sleeve and bushing devices, like here or here. The coaxial sealing technology is creating a very thin coaxial sealing dam by use of nitrogen pressure to prevent oil entering the dry gas seal chamber. This is the axial sealing dam. Radial sealing technologies are double labyrinths and covering seals. While within the covering seals, we talk about static covering seals and dynamic liftoff type covering seals. Coaxial sealing technology represents the coaxial separation seal. Its working principle is similar to the working principle of the dry gas seal. Once the coaxial separation seal is pressurized with nitrogen via this board, the stationary ring is lifting off the rotating ring and creates a coaxial sealing gap. The technologies and different designs show significant differences in terms of reliable separation of the bearing oil from the dry gas seal. This table gives a good overview how the separation seal types can deal with several topics related to the operation. The oil sealing performance 
reflects the main function of the separation seal, while the gas separation capability describes the lateral function and is related to safety aspect in case of dry gas seal failure by avoiding process gas contamination of the green brackets. Other aspects, like slow roll capabilities, sensitivity for radio vibrations, and cryogenic conditions of the separation gas are related to operational advantages. Seal gas consumption and maintenance intervals reflect the economical look, which is important, but not relevant with regards to increase of compressor operation reliability. Looking on all those aspects, the coaxial separation seal design provides the biggest edge to avoid contamination related to bearing oil. Well, a lot of options have been discussed in this session on how to cope with the challenge to get dry gases more reliable in centrifugal compressors. Overall, we can say that the industry today has a quite good choice to identify the best individual solution to increase the reliability of centrifugal compressor operation while using dry gas seals. All mentioned options, respectively solutions, are proven in field operation and shows the actual industry standard. It gives a good overview on how suppliers are contributing to overcome the operation boundaries and at the same time provides reliable solutions for a more reliable compressor operation. My name is Christian Bonford and I was your host for this presentation. I am happy for any question during this online workshop and beyond. Thank you for your attention, your time and have a good day.